I am off on another bikepacking adventure with just £100 in my pocket and two strangers waiting for me in London. Well, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, and we're self-filming the whole lot. Yeah. So, I've arrived in London, got myself a coffee because I'm absolutely dying for one. And I should probably mention where I'm going and why I'm going on this bikepacking adventure. Now, I've been wanting to do a bikepacking adventure on a budget for a long time now. And then, just by chance, I got an email from Andrew saying, Dear GCN Show, my friend Francisco and I are avid cyclists and keen followers of GCN. We noted you've done lots of videos on low-cost ways to enjoy the sport, but there hasn't been much coverage on how you can cheaply spend a weekend away on the minimal cost. This November, we have booked a weekend away for £91, and hoping to keep it below £100 after food. Starting from London after work Friday, we are taking the train and ferry to Calais, staying overnight, followed by a Saturday cycle to Lille, by Ypres and Roubaix, returning to Calais on Sunday through the Saint-Omer. Approx about 240 kilometers with a train and ferry back in time for work Monday. We wondered if you'd like to send a presenter to join us. There's two hotel rooms and it could be a great addition. Ah. And so here I am going on a bike pack adventure with two people I've never met before. Don't really know where I'm going and I'm kind of excited for it. Here he is. Hello. This How's is my new partner. <laughs> nice Again, to see buddy. you. Nice to meet you. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Good trip? Yeah, it's not too bad. Sort of 20 minutes on the bike. That's so. all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Sort of, I'm ready to this go. This is your setup? Yeah, proper footwear, as you can see, you know. Yes. Awesome. That'll get us to Lille and back. Oh. This is Francisco. This is our next compatriot. How are you, my friend? Good you well? You. Good to meet you, man. Good to meet you too. You well? Andrew, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. <laughs> Thank so you very much. you're coming bike packing with us. Are you excited? Yes. Super excited. <laughs> <laughs> how was right. work? Yeah, not too bad. Not yeah. too bad. Yeah. Get a lot of work done. Uh, today, not much. Not really. much. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't, you don't mind me having a camera in your face, do you? Okay. Because you're gonna get used to it over the next couple yeah, of days. It feels so weird, but yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> so, dress for work. Next stop, Dover. <laughs> Just arrived at St Pancras Station. And look at it. It is stunning. So this is where we're getting the train to head to the coast. So Andrew's sorting out the tickets. I've been given mine. Destination Dover. So um, we've been here about two minutes and Andrew's already gone. Um, he's currently in the queue to get a picture with uh, the Labour leader here in the UK called Keir Starmer. And um, well, we're just watching from above. <laughs> Where do you go, mate? So I went to go and see Keir Starmer. So he's selling poppies. So he's got us one to give at the Tankot Cemetery tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> yeah. We've got a poppy from Labour leader Keir Starmer. Who would have thought it? <laughs> right, we got to get a train. It was really great to finally meet Andrew and Francisco. Andrew was the smiliest man and most positive man I have ever met. And Francisco seemed pretty nervous, but I was really looking forward to getting to know these two even more. So we've arrived in Dover. So passports out the ready. It's now going through customs. So we've got the tickets, we're now ready to board, we've got to attach these to our bikes, and we're good to go. Gotta say, it's super exciting, you know, just riding up onto a boat. There's something quite amazing about it. Commanding. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Here we are, first one on the ferry. Having got on the ferry, we said goodbye to England, and then France was awaiting our arrival. Yeah, 
Yes. My bikes are still there. <laughs> right, so uh, Andrew, this is where we're staying. This is known as the Hotel Premier Plus. <laughs> yeah, I think someone needs to work on that sign. Right, let's find our room, shall we? Apparently, we've been doing bike packing on a budget, so we've got one room between three of us. price of this room was £30. So that's £10 between each of us, which is about, what, 15 euros? Yeah. 13 40, euros? It's about 41 euros. It's 41 euros for the whole thing. 41 euros for the whole thing. So yeah, $50, 50 bucks. There you have it. And um, yeah, we're just gonna get a good night kit. <laughs> I'm gonna read these guys a story. All right, guys. Oh, Benny, my adventure starts. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for bed. <laughs> Sleep well, squads. Yeah, good night. <laughs> Sleep well. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> so it's the morning. Andrew, how did you sleep? Pretty well. Pretty cosy. <laughs> it is pretty cosy, but we are doing this on a budget, aren't we, Andrew? Yeah. So, so yeah, it's not bad for what, £10 a night each. You can't expect much more. So. No, exactly. The only one thing we did realise is that this room's for two people and, um, well, we only had two towels. So... A bit of drip drying. Andrew did some shake dry, <laughs> which I rate. But um, but now we're getting ready to go. Uh, all cycling kits is up and ready to go. And then um, we're heading about 10k away before we get coffee and Andrew doesn't actually drink coffee so it's not it's not high on his priority list but for me it's pretty high. What's going on here Andrew? So it looks like uh, the mudguard sheared <laughs> so we're gonna tape it up and hopefully that'll keep us uh, in one piece until we get there. Well, I feel like that that mudguard's had its day. Yeah so you can see I've done a bit of temporary repairs so <laughs> this is an old plant pot Oh. And at the front, you can see the other one oh, really? stitched up with a plant pot as well. Um, but you've always got to ask the gardener's permission before you chop up their... Uh... Pack forward slash bodge of the week. <laughs> so with the uh, premier class hotel behind us, we are off on our travels. Next destination, where are we off to? Gravelin. The Gravelin. Is that right? Gravelin for breakfast. Gravelin for breakfast. So I could do as a breakfast. Andrew, I thought we'd get a breakfast. <laughs> what am I doing? My, I don't want to do my weekly shop. <laughs> I'm sure they'll have class on. I hope they do. Right. I thought we were going to the French cafe. Cappuccinos are ready, <laughs> yeah. So it turns out when you order a uh, cappuccino in France, you don't get milk foam, you get um, whipped cream. All right for some, are you yeah, jealous? I'm a little bit jealous now. <laughs> Change my mind. Mm. So, yeah, we're ready, we're all so packed up. So now we're up. going to Dunkirk? Dunkirk Beach. Okay, Headed so let's to Dunkirk go. Beach. You ready, Francisco? Yeah, I am ready. <laughs> Super cool. Let's warm up. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go, please. <laughs> Twelve miles, sixteen k in. It's looking good. Here we are 
in Dunkirk. Beautiful beach, actually. It's crazy to think, though, that hundreds of thousands of soldiers were here back in World War II. And uh, we're just doing a little bit of an explore. We've left Dunkirk Beach. We're all together, our little pod of whales. <laughs> and uh, now we're headed to Warham. Now Warham's where I'm hoping to see my great grandfather's burial. That's where he's, uh, I think he was buried. Andrew's brought me all the way to my great grandfather's gravestone. So this is Major Angus McCorkdale. This is his gravestone here. He died in 1940, aged 34. And he was one of the Coldstream guards that were protecting the retreat. So everyone at Dunkirk could evacuate. And they did 300,000 soldiers evacuate. So here we are, dropping off the poppy in remembrance of Angus. It is crazy to think he died in 1940 and uh, at just the age of 34, that's just four years older than me. It's mental. Coming up to Belgium. Crossing the border, another country done. Here we are. Another country done. To Belgium. Right, so to mark the transition as we go into Belgium, it's time to swap from French hat into Belgium. So you definitely know that we're tourists. With a few kilometers under our belt, it was time for a quick break and some lunch. Luckily though, we found a shelter. And in this case, it was a bus shelter. So this is something that you don't see uh, every day with Gordon Ramsay, but if you want to make the best cheese sandwich, oh, oh, I know. <laughs> So, we've got a knife. A good what? Debit card. No. So, make sure it's one you don't want to use for the next couple of hours. And then, just slice along. The cheese has been nice and warmed in the bag, so it should be... Uh, Where's your debit card being, though? No. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> what cash flow? <point? laughs> <laughs> make clean cash flow. Did you thought about this? Where is that debit card being? Uh, well, let's not think about that. <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> I'm going slightly, slightly faster after that. So once we've chopped up with the debit card. I guess if I'm in for a penny, I'm in for a pound. Yeah. And uh, Andrew's amazing tour. <laughs> this is this is my pack on a budget. I can't, I can't, I'm, you know. What's the verdict? We're up and up. Let's get one for the Francisco either. After a lovely sandwich made up of chunks of cheese, salami, and a side of what well, cash machine residue, it was time to get to our next destination, Ypres. Miles, 90k. Thank you, thank you. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. good. A bit wet, a bit damp. A bit wet, but yeah, it's raining a bit, but 
So we've made it to our next point of interest. Where are we, Andrew? So this is the Menin Gate. It's a memorial that's dedicated to those that fell and missing, and they never found them on the battlefield. So here in Ypres marked a major salient in, uh, in the line of World War I. And most soldiers passed through this gate on the way to the front itself. And there's a famous poem, isn't there? Exactly. So John McRae, uh, was um, a war medic and he saw or witnessed the funeral of a very close friend of his uh, in the Second Battle of Ypres and he wrote a poem um, and it's about what went on here and I think Hank you were going to tell us yeah now. and the poem goes a bit like this in Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns below we are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from falling hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. After paying our respects, it was time to get back on the bike. Well, after Andrew tries to fix his plant pot bodge. Our next destination is the Tynecott Cemetery. Now this is the largest cemetery for the Commonwealth forces in the world and a burial ground for those that died in the First World War. There are 34,000 soldiers buried here. It is incredible. It's quite something seeing of this many gravestones. Lights are going on. It's dark here at Tynecott. The sun is down and now we are off because we've got the longest leg of our journey still to go. Quick fuel up and off we go. It is, time is 8.30. I'm looking forward to getting some grub if I'm honest. It's been a good day, but it's been a long day. So we've arrived at our location, the Ibis Budget Hotels. Cheap and cheerful. How much was this room? This one was about 40 euros again, so 30 pounds. 30 pounds, 40 euros. I mean, that is cheap. Right, it's about time we get in there, we get showered, changed, and uh, then we're gonna get some food. It's been a long day. You enjoyed it? Yeah, it's been a great day. You enjoyed it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, we are in our room for tonight, um, but it's not gonna be much of a tour. It's not going to take a long, is it, Andrew? No, so we've got not much, but you can tell it's a budget room because you've got to make your own bed. Yeah, this is no five star, this is on a budget. So here is to the first day. It's been an epic day. I mean, it's massively enjoyed both of your company. I think we've made a good team. Right, Cheers first day done. Cheers to that. So the time is eight o'clock. We stayed in the hotel behind us and we slept really well. Good dinner out in the middle of Lille. Now we're heading to Roubaix. Um, 100K to go before we make it to Calais. So we've got a bit of a race against time because we've got to make the ferry back home, ready for work on Monday. Anyway, we've got to get rid of long. We're an hour late because we slept in and now we're heading to Roubaix, which I've never been before. So. Pretty excited to get to that fellow drone. You forgot your phone! Oh no! I knew I'd forget something. It's in the morning, we're just leaving. Andrew managed to grab my phone, which is ideal. And 
now the guys are running light because we're coming to come back to Lille. We just wanted to see the Roubaix Velodrome. So let's get on the bikes and let's get going. Let's go. Is there anything more French than a tree-lined avenue? <laughs> Nothing, I think. So guys, do you want to race? It's time for a race. I think it's time. Before we yeah. get kicked out, we should um, uh, we'll see who is the fastest. Uh, I'm fully weighted up, so you guys have got a head start. Yeah, we, should, we should be fastest. <laughs> right, Let's are we see. ready to race? Bring it on. Ready, Francisco? Ready. Right. Three, Three two, one. With a photo finish to confirm the winner and a very questionable lunge from Andrew, our fun on the track was over and it was time to get serious and get back on our bikes. A quick update, we're leaving. Andrew's doing a pirouette. <laughs> we're leaving the Ibis for the second time. We've been to Roubaix, we loved it. I mean, it was genuinely a bit of a bucket list thing to do is to go and ride on the Paris Roubaix Velodrome. And now the rain has started to come down, but we are headed to a uh, little cafe in Lille for a bit of petit déjeuner to kind of fuel us for the next. I reckon we're doing, going to do like 30, 40 k's without, without stopping. Yeah. So we're going to fuel up, we're going to get into that rain, and we're going to enjoy it. All right, good to go. I get. Seeing as we're on a budget, we're only we couldn't really afford a coffee in a posh place, so uh, I've got us breakfast McMuffins. It's only 12 euros. Fresh from France, Petit Dijonet McMuffin. This is the not so glamorous side. It's wet. It's windy. It's pretty grim. How you doing, Francisco? Yeah, not too bad. I'm saying this is proper adventure now. Yeah, buddy, you are <laughs> soaking, man. Yeah, I am, I think I am. But yeah, pretty good. Very well indeed. How are you feeling, Andrew? Well, I wish everybody else had podcasts because you can see I'm covered in their mud. <laughs> Mate, you're soaking. <laughs> You are absolutely soaking, mate. I'm drenched through. Oh my god. And Andrew is just grabbing a snack. What on earth are you eating there? <laughs> it's our good old block of cheese. It's gonna fuel us everywhere. Oh my god. Andrew. With the rain coming down and the temperature plummeting, we tried to keep the pace up so that we could keep nice and warm. But it was fair to say, Andrew, I think, was starting to feel the cold. There you go. So the last 40k has been pretty tough. It's, uh, I think I bonked at some point and uh, <laughs> got a bit tired, but uh, nothing a Big Mac can't fix. So now we're heading down to the port, but we're doing it the scenic route. So we're going along the uh, canal, uh, the Calais Canal. Um, just for a bit of scenery because, you know, you can, you can because never... Because why not, Andrew? Yeah, it's better than a motorway. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so wet! Yeah. I don't know if you can see this, but it's absolutely pooing it down. Yeah, it really is. What are you going to say? I can say, yeah, we've gone the wrong way. Oh. Why have we gone the wrong? So you know when you took the right and went all the way along here? Yeah. Which looks great. Because... We're going back. The access to the ferry for bikes is that way.
Wow. We made it. What a journey. <laughs> it's been adventurous. I've enjoyed it. It's been interesting. Never thought I'd go bike packing with people I've never met before, but I've left every minute of it. Our adventure has returned back in Calais. With a few soggy passports and three very wet and cold riders, we arrived here having just met with one thing in common. We loved riding bikes. We now return having made great memories and cemented a good friendship. Guys, our journey is complete. We've arrived back in Calais. We are all in one piece. Yep. We're not too cold. We haven't got hypothermia. And we survived Andrew's adventure. And behind us lies Calais, in front of us Dover, and also in front of us Monday morning, and back to work. Have you got any last words about the trip? Well, it's been an amazing trip. I'm glad that you came and joined us. I'm glad uh, I came. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's been amazing. We've had a tough day today, but it's been great to be cycling together and to make it to Calais safe and now back to home. Andrew? Well, I think the key takeaway for me is to show that anyone can do it, and we've done it on a budget. So, so how much did it cost us to get from London to Lille and back? So, I think it was about £90 in the end, so it was 20 pounds of trains down to and from Dover. Um, then we had 20 pounds each way on the ferry, 30 pounds um, in total for each hotel. So divide that by three ways, that's a tenner each. Yeah. And all that's left to do is buy some food and you've seen us have all sorts, I think. Yeah, and we really didn't spend a huge amount of money there. It was about 30 pounds each for food or about maybe about 50 quid. So in total, we've spent 140 pounds, so about 160 euros for this entire trip, which we've done on a weekend, and we still haven't missed any work. So there you have it. If we can do it, you can do it. Let us know in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Massive thank you for Andrew and Francisco for taking me on this epic journey. I've absolutely loved it. And uh, I can't wait to tell Manon, Cy, Connor, Dan, and all the friends to, uh, to come along with the, these guys on their next trip. Anyway, we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, look after yourselves. Bye.